This is Twit. Okay, so this week's top story, uh, I, I titled it A True May Day for Intel. About uh, a year ago, I, I, I looked back through the transcripts, uh, backlog, and and I couldn't find the specific the specific podcast where we discussed this in depth, but because we've discussed it many times, we've touched on it many times. And that's the this the so-called Intel management engine, which exists in a number of different forms. There's something called IAM, which is Intel Active Management, SBT, which is Small Business Technology, and ISM, which is Intel Standard Manageability. Uh, it's been around since the uh, since like 2008 with the and I had it written down. I don't don't don't, don't see it. Is is it the Kalem or it's, uh, I can't remember which processor architecture. It's some N yes, that's the Nahalem, one. Yeah. From them through KB Lake, so like up through just now, and the, the ME has had different versions. The, this Intel management engine, but but. Uh, versions from V6 through 11.6, which is current, uh, are the area of concern. The problem, and as we discussed it before, is that this cannot be turned off. You, there's no way to disable it. You, you can't turn it off in the BIOS. There's that you can enable additional features, but the baseline set of features just there's just no getting around it. It's it's um, it's a separate ARC ARC processor that actually runs in one of the Intel, you know, uh, one of the Intel chipset components that surrounds the main Intel processor to, to, that does all the memory management and I/O glue and and slot management and so forth, providing USB and and PCI functions and you know BIOS and and all of that. Um, it's always running. Intel has gone to tremendous lengths to keep it a secret. So it's not open. It's never been subject to scrutiny. People have been for years worried about it and chipping away at it. But as we discussed previously at length, you know, Intel did it like used every trick in the book to to hide what this is. And and that alone is a concern. The idea that there is something in all motherboards for the last nine years, from 2008 on, which is outside of all non-Intel scrutiny. The protocol is not documented. It's available under NDA and has been licensed to like three companies. Unfortunately, one of them is Symantec. Let's hope they can do a better job with that than they have with certificate issuance. Um, so there are a few companies that provide enterprise access functionality that allow enterprises to manage their deploy their deployed machines throughout the enterprise so not just servers but laptops desktops tablets anything essentially with an with an intel chipset for nearly the past decade and in fact our listeners will remember that i was pulling my hair out for a couple of weeks i put it i put a I was bringing up a new Intel base 2U server about a year ago, and it was causing a, 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 over at the level three data center. And I was getting these IP address conflicts. I was there was an ARP storm, and and interfaces were fighting each other, and I just nothing I could do. I couldn't turn it off. I couldn't figure out what was going on. Finally. When I, because those these machines have multiple LAN interfaces, when I moved it from LAN 1 to LAN 2, that is away from the primary NIC, all of that went away. And I remember when we were discussing all this at the time, uh, verifying that only the primary NIC 
on multi-NIC motherboards has this, this IME interface and that what you what anyone could do would be to switch to a secondary or tertiary, anything but the primary NIC, and you would be okay because there's otherwise no way to turn this off. Well, the other shoe is dropped, and we now have a confirmed exploit. I mean, this is what, what everybody was worried about, um, and this is as bad as it gets because unlike – OS, uh, you know, current versions of OSs themselves and to an even degree, greater degree browsers and to some degree even apps. The motherboard BIOS, while there may be patches available, there isn't an auto patching mechanism. And even though and only enterprises really need or use this, this is the conundrum, is it's on and cannot be disabled in through any means. So, and, I, I know, while I was putting all this together, I dug into the background thinking, you know, is there a scanner? Is there is there some way we that we could check? The problem is, this is the problem with anything that is secret and proprietary and rigorously undocumented is nobody knows anything about this except we we now have a confirmed exploit this uh, there were, i found one site where some guy for years has been pounding on intel telling them this is a problem and they've apparently just been ignoring him that's what's but, really frustrating is that this is yes. known yes for years yes that's yes. really frustrating and Intel says, oh, that's not a problem. That's not a problem. Uh, so suddenly it's May Day. They have they have issued just yesterday on May 1st, 2017, patches for all of their firmware through, through for all of these motherboards. And while that's the good news, the problem is there are all I mean, like I've got, I, I just found, I just checked my my Lenovo X1 Carbon. It's got it, and it's in there, and it's running, and I don't want it. But you know, so so it'll be one. It, as soon as I'm through with the podcast, I will see about what whether, and I'll I'll talk about it next week. What I find, then I'll check GRC Security Now News Group because I'm sure that our that, that the people there will will be interested in finding out how, whether there are firmware updates how, how for their systems. How could you patch this? Because uh, isn't this in hardware? I mean... No, it, it is. It is. I mean, it's it's deep firmware is probably the way to describe it. So it there are versions and they do they do have patches, but there is no... And, and an enterprise could, could deploy these patches but but just so people understand this is this is a root kit as i mean this that's the best way to describe it um it, from my notes i wrote recent intel x86 processors implement a secret powerful control mechanism that runs on a separate chip that no one is allowed to audit or examine when these are eventually compromised the, they'll expose all affected systems to nearly unkillable, undetectable rootkit attacks. Um, uh, uh, and, and the guy I'm quoting said, I've made it my mission to open up this system and make free open replacements before it's too late. And that's what we, we talked about this last year. There, there, was, there is a project to, to, to replace this with publicly available open source solution. Um, the, the, this guy goes on, the Intel management engine is a subsystem composed of a special 32-bit ARC microprocessor that's physically located inside the chipset. It's an extra general purpose computer running a firmware blob that is sold as a management system for big enterprise deployments. When you purchase your system with a main board and Intel x86 CPU, that is to say with an Intel chipset, you are also buying this hardware add-on, an extra computer 
that controls the main CPU. This extra computer runs completely out of band with the main x86 CPU, meaning that it can function totally independently even when your main CPU is in a low power state like S3, suspend. On some chipsets, the firmware running on the ME implements a system called Intel's Active Management Technology. This is entirely transparent to the operating system, which means this extra computer can do its job regardless of which operating system is installed. So it doesn't mean Windows. It could be Linux. It could be, you know, or, or like no OS if it's just sitting there waiting to be deployed. But it gets worse. The purpose of AMT is to provide a way to manage computers remotely. This is similar to an older system called Intelligent Platform Management Interface, IPMI, but this is more powerful than that. To achieve this task, the ME is capable of accessing any memory region without the main x86 CPU knowing about the existence of these accesses. I mean, it is a classic hardware backdoor. It also runs a TCIP server on your network interface and packets entering and leaving your machine on certain ports bypass any firewall running on your system. You, this cannot be blocked by anything that you do running on top of it. While AMT can be great value add, it has several troubling disadvantages. ME is classified by security researchers, and this is what we talked about at the time, as ring minus three. You know, it's, you know, no, normal apps run at plus three. Ring zero is the OS. Well, this is way beneath the OS. <laughs> I didn't even know there was a ring negative <laughs> ring. Ring minus three. Rings of security, he writes, can be defined as layers of security that affect particular parts of a system with a smaller ring number corresponding to an area closer to the hardware. For example, ring three threats are defined as security threats that manifest in user space mode. Ring zero threats occur in kernel level. Ring minus one threats occur in a hypervisor level. One level lower than the kernel, ring minus two threats, occur in a special CPU called SMM. That's system management mode, a special mode that Intel CPUs can be put into that runs a separately defined chunk of code. And if attackers can modify the SMM code and trigger the mode, they can get arbitrary execution of code on the CPU. But that's the main CPU. And this is minus three, even below that. So, okay, so Intel rates this, their own problem, as critical, remotely exploitable. I would love to know what external vulnerability this represents, but this is part of the problem. The information is so blacked out that I could find nothing about how to scan for it, how to detect it, how, I mean, how, like anything. But but here's the concern, is that systems will not update themselves. Unlike browsers and OSs and many apps, the, the BIOS doesn't. You normally need to go get it. Now, people like Lenovo, who have tried to integrate system management, controversial as it is, I would imagine that that if you are using the Lenovo, keep your system up to date. I know that it does BIOS updates. I've had because I'm I've been a long time ThinkPad and then a, a Lenovo user. I imagine that they could use that mechanism to push that out. But if you've just got in the last nearly a decade any Intel system uh, um, that has this. IME, the Intel Management Engine technology in it, then um, we don't really have a way of gauging. You know, you mean you know, I, I don't want to run around hair on fire screaming well, if, that the sky I is mean, falling. There's mitigation if you don't use a Intel the built-in network, but, but use your own network card, you're safe, right? Correct. Correct. 
Uh, yes. If you uh, and I, you know, it has to be these managed computers. It's in every Intel chip, but I don't. It's it's not. I don't. It was my sense it wasn't in the management engine wasn't enabled unless you have a managed system. No, that's not correct. That's not it's correct. absolutely okay. is absolutely enabled. Um, okay. I'm sure. And now, one, one thing you can do um, on Windows machines, if you l browse through your list of services, and I did this on my Win 7 uh, X1, and there it was, Intel Management Engine, a service running. And that's the other problem, is that this is also vulnerable to local exploit, not just remote exploit. So you because have, Intel says you have to have vPro technology for this, which is not all Intel chips. Correct. And and good. I'm I'm glad you mentioned that. Yes, that is right.